No, I want to be able to tell them why we're doing something and why it's going to help them because, again, for me, the buy-in is greater. You're going to have the worst program in the world, but if you can sell it, it's the best program in the world, okay? If you have the best program in the world and you can't sell it, you can't tell the players why they can do it, they're never going to buy in. That's any level to me. Our running program changed the direction on Monday, obviously coming off a three-day weekend. We don't want to just put them into our speed work, so we're going to do shorter stuff with them on that day. Uh, kind of following through here, speed conditioning, and then more of a high-intensity interval training day. Uh, we just kind of do that as more of a straw man. That's where we put some competitive stuff in. Again, the same slide, just kind of breaking in a little bit. We'll do programmable first, and then reactive as we're building through that GPP phase. The acceleration. Resisted form running, we'll put it, we'll do all that stuff. More of that stuff will go with our skill guys and some of our big skill. Uh, our big guys won't really do form running. They won't do form running. They will do some di different resistance stuff, which we'll get to. Tempo runs for conditioning, metabolic circuits on the last day. Our idea in off season is to continually get stronger throughout the whole thing, obvious, okay? Uh, our tempo bench is really just eccentric tempo on our bench and squat. The only difference we do, we call it tempo, just because we're calling out the cadence for the whole group. I'll also show you the video of that. So I'm leading the whole group in their cadence, when to take the bar off the rack, okay? when to lift it, and then when to rack it. So everything's under control. We have huge groups, huge groups, and everybody in there wants to move their weight up. We use percentages, okay? we use the 531 percentages as we go through that uh, from Jim Wendler. Uh, and as we go through that, everybody wants to jump up real fast. Well, that's not the point, okay? We're, 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 again, what have you been doing for three months? Have you been on vacation for three months? What have you been doing? So we're going to slow play that a little bit. But I'll show you a video of this. This is a great thing for us, and it's just really eccentric training. Um, how we break our days up, the max, effort, the max effort style early in the week. We move to dynamic at, towards the end, repetition on Wednesdays. And our repetition day will be a little bit different. Sometimes we'll do some different things that Aaron puts together for the guys, really high, high volume. Uh, and those might be competitive reps, so we might pair them up. And it's whoever gets the top reps, but everything's on an on eccentric load uh, for those lifts. So that's how we kind of break them up to get a little bit more competition in the weight room. The other interesting thing about that is, so we usually have offense first and then defense second. So two hours, two hours. Well, on the Wednesday, sometimes we can get crossover. So that's the only time the offense and defense might see each other. Again, they can only be in the, hour, in the building for four hours. So they might not ever cross paths other than in the hallway, and they might not compete. So you know, there might be a guy in the offense, you don't know who he is. So we try to match guys up, get them to compete. You know, we've had our kicker take down uh, linebackers and fullbacks before on reps. He's just a better, he's a better lifter than those guys. He's stronger than them. Uh, so it kind of opens their eyes a little bit. And that's something fun we do on our Wednesday lifts. Uh, recovery stuff, we try to teach these guys um, all this stuff here. The nutrition is big for us. Um, I tell guys the first day they come in, the biggest thing you can change if they want to be successful in the NFL is their nutrition. I'd say about 50% take advantage of that. The other 50 don't care, and they'll just keep eating McDonald's. Okay, it eventually catches up to them. All right, but it's got to be, it's the education. It's teaching these guys how to do it uh, because, again, at the end of the day, these guys are grown men. They can go in and out of the building for, for breakfast and lunch, or yeah, breakfast and lunch during the off-season program. Okay, training camp, I'll kind of go quick through here. Same, same assessment stuff. Again, big groups right before practice or after practice, depending on the day and the practice tempo. Uh, same thing, football's first for us here, work around practice. Stress the small stuff. So we're working a lot of ankles, shoulders, knees, hips, neck, getting all that stuff in, making sure those are our front, that's in the front of our workout. We get all that in together to make sure everybody's doing it. We begin to rebuild the foundation. Again, they'll go away for five weeks before camp. It's an ingenious idea to send guys home for five weeks before they come back for a rigorous training camp. So what are we dealing with? We have to restart a lot of those guys, and we get guys that get hurt the first day they get there. You know, They might pull something running a tempo 40, and it's not a fast 40 for a big guy because they haven't done anything. So they took time off. So we have to take that into account that I can't, again, just go – you know, back into what I think they should be doing. I really have to figure out where these guys are at again. Work around injuries is always big in camp. Again, heavy communication with our coaching staff and trainers. Same type of procedure as we go in there. We'll do total body lifts. It basically works out every other day. And I'm continuing to just evolve the program based upon how practice is going. Uh, in season, three lift groups three times a week. 15 to 25 players cuts down a little bit, okay? Same thing we don't maintain during the season. We're trying to pro progressively get stronger, adjust and adapt. 
okay, to the player's needs and limitations. So you might have an older guy, again, he can't squat, not a big deal. We're going to move on to something else. We're going to find a way to continue to train this guy. Quality over quantity, not a huge volume uh, guy for me in season. It's really about being really smart with our time. Again, less is more. Being effective with the guys, trying not to increase overuse injuries. They're already on the field doing a ton of work. We don't need to continue to beat them down. Uh, stress the small stuff. The last one here, it's not all about us, okay? It's about the player, so I need to listen to them. So that's not saying, well, I don't want to bench, so I'm just going to walk out the room. No, it's, it's listening to them, where their bodies are at. You know, half the time, I'm like the psychologist in there talking to guys, talking them off a cliff. Now you don't need to squat 700 pounds today. It's okay, you could do the 400 pounds on the card. You know, a lot of that stuff is just teaching the guys because they don't know. Again, what program did they come from? You know, where are they at? What's their body type? Is their fat mass way too high? And now we're talking about a guy who's just waiting to pull something. You know, all those things we have to take into account. So listen to the player. And again, if it's a rookie, you might not take as much information from them as a guy who's been playing for 10 years and he's done it for a long time. So I have to rely on that. In season, same procedure, going through three lifts. Uh, and with our in season, you know, uh, this is again a huge part for us. We're going to really hamper our warm up stuff it, when they come in the room, our rolling and everything like that. Um, continue to progress. So, Mondays for us, post game Monday, we're going to do what we call an elevator lift. We're hitting all types of angles on the, on the body. And the reason we do that is because if we do a bench here, a pull here, and continue to go up, we use the benches and we just go one click up on everything. And basically, there's a pull for everything. So, it's more of a push pull on that day. Uh, we're really trying to find. <clears throat> excuse me, find out if they have any injuries. Did anything happen they don't know about? Because we want to address it on a Monday rather than a Thursday, okay, when that max effort day is. So we want to get it out of the way now. Same thing, we do leg press. We do a lot of leg stuff on that day too, uh, but we really want to find anything out. Friday, the TV arm day, that's just guys that like to lift and want to get big. So a lot of linebackers. So a lot of linebackers in that group. This is our in-season post-game conditioning. We do a lot of these bikes, um, and we can get them to work pretty hard. Um, you know, at a pretty low impact exercise. This is something that we put in a couple years ago. And guys will do it, they'll do it as extra conditioning rather than maybe going out and run. Is it the best? No, but it gets their heart rate up a little bit, gets some blood flow. And to me, it made more sense than just running a real slow 50 yard uh, stride or something like that for, for what we're doing. Bob Pod, do a lot of Bob Pod stuff. We're continually tracking the guys, trying to watch where their fat mass is, okay, and their lean mass. The reason we do that is because that helps us adapt their program. Um, Based upon other things too, but it gives us a good read and it also for us validates our program. So when we have a guy come back and he gets in the bod pod and he lost whatever, five pounds of muscle since the end of the program before training camp and then he puts on 10 pounds of muscle in season, well, it's really because he got so detrained, he just lost everything. So it really validates what we're doing. I'm not saying we have the answers, but with a little bit of work, it's amazing what can happen. The in season, the, you know, the bod pod stuff, it's important for us. We just try to keep tracking these guys as they go through. Keep, you know, keep track of them. Ultimate goal is to keep all the players on the field and keep playing at a high level. So we want them to stay healthy. We've had some success over the years being one of the more less injured teams. I can't say the same for this year. Luckily, I don't have the slide for that. This year, we got hit by a lot. We had 21 guys wind up on IR. Now, that's pretty bad. Um, but there were some, some different things with that. And uh, you know, for us, we just got hit, and it reflected in our record. So you know, again, all that stuff. As Buddy mentioned, comes back to us, and you have to be able to answer some questions about what's going on in there and why things happened. Um, and sometimes you, you, know, you don't have the answer, and that's okay too. You, know, you have to be able to use people, research, call people, uh, talk to the team doctors for me, talk to the trainers, and look at, look at myself in the mirror first. And that's why this year I've kind of went out and I've brought some other people in. Uh, we had JL out last week. I'm bringing Nate in in two weeks. And we're bringing guys in uh, to, to kind of look at what we're doing. Not to question what we're doing, but we kind of look and see if there's any, if, there, if we're missing something just from a different eye, someone that's not there every day. Um, coaching large groups. The biggest thing for me with a coaching a large group is have a great plan. Have a plan of attack of what you're going in to do and know why you're doing it. And just make sure, you know, at the end of the day that, you know, when you walk out on that field and if things change, you still have to have a great plan B going in. So you need to have your coaches on board with you there. Okay, considerations of training. There's that mask for you, buddy. In the background, the suffocation mask. That's Cromarty. You had him. He, uh, so I put that in there because this is something big, right? They all saw Marshawn Lynch wearing the mask, and everybody all of a sudden wanted to wear it. All right? So, you know, this is pregame picture. This was a pregame picture, and I'm like, what are you doing? Um, you know, I want to get my oxygen levels up. All right, man. You know, that's not helping you, but 
At that time, it was he would wear it for about two minutes before he couldn't breathe anymore, so then he would take it off. So <laughs> go ahead, wear it. We had guys come in the weight room and try to squat. I, I'm telling you, it was like three minutes, and I, <clears throat> you know, it's just suffocating you. So, you know, we talk about the hypoxico. We have hypoxico, and then they want to get on there for 10 minutes. Well, that doesn't work either. It's 90 minutes of interval training at like 80 to 95%, right? They don't want to do that, that before you get that true blood change. So, you know, off-season group size, the players' opinions for me. You know, all players are educated. Sometimes they're, too, they're just educated enough to be dangerous to themselves. So, again, I'm talking guys off the ledge. You want to wear the mask for the whole workout? Give it a try. You won't make it, you know. Uh, but I'm not going to fight him about that. If you want to put it on for five minutes, because I know you're not going to make it any longer than that, that's fine. The new CBA, buddy touched on that. Uh, completely agree. Um, it's changed a lot. I wasn't in the NFL before that. Um, so I don't know even what it was like pre-CBA. I have no idea. So all I know is the new time restraints we have, guys coming in. So everything is shortened up. Sometimes in the offseason, I might only have an hour and a half with a group because special teams meeting, offense, defense. Do we have a new coordinator in? Do we have a new coach that needs more time? All that stuff I have to be aware of. And I have to you know, always remember at the end of the day, they're there to play football. I have to do what I can do and, and you know, whatever time they give me. More consideration training, nutrition, recovery, training, all those things. One, are they educated on it? And two, I need to educate them on it. So what are they doing uh, from a nutrition standpoint? Again, uh, I was talking to Scott out in the hallway. Most guys don't have any idea what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do it. And when they see you know, a plan, they think it's too hard. You know, so they don't do that. But we all know that that's a huge part of what these guys are doing as far as recovery and training. If their nutrition is off, the other two are going to be off. So trying to educate the guys, trying to spend time with them and let them know, they're, you know everything's there for us. We have a great facility. We have great food. We have everything that you could possibly want. Okay, but they just have to take advantage of the plan. There is no, you know, in the offseason, they're in there for four hours. They're out there at 12.01. If they're in 8 to 12, they're out at 12.01. See you later going to McDonald's probably. So we have to educate them the best we can. And I might spend five minutes in a weight room session talking about nutrition. Here's how you have to hydrate pre-game. Pre Here's how you have to hydrate pre-practice. Here's what you have to do post-practice. And that stuff for me, it all takes place in your recovery and your training. So if we don't educate them on, on that, there's no point to educate them on the other two. And we need guys to do that. Um, and like I said, we, we make ourselves very available to help these guys out with the nutrition standpoint. Considerations of training more. Three months off after the season, what am I dealing with when they come back? I look at, I told some people here, I look at Instagram and I just shake my head and, you know, guys are doing some weird stuff and then they come back and they struggle real bad when they come back to us because they were at a boxing class, but this was the boxing class doing this. It's not, you want to get punched in the head, that's boxing. You want to go spar with somebody, that's boxing. That You're doing Zumba, you're doing something that's not really helping you out the most, you know. Um, so I have to, when they come in, as I go back again, I have to really slow play it and make sure I know what I'm dealing with before I put a guy out there. And again, buddy touched on a lot, the GPP period, the two weeks, that's about what I can give them um, at that time before we start kind of picking it up a little bit. I need to do that. The five weeks off before camp, again, yeah, it's not smart, but we have to deal with that and we have to, we all, we have to take that into consideration as they come back in. Having a great plan still. Are you organized? Okay, do you tell the athletes exactly what you want? We try to, we always try to explain exactly what we're doing that day, why we're doing it, uh, and get it out there. It might, again, I might bring them up for three minutes. The whole group's around, I go quick through it. Guys have questions, come back to it. Because I need them to know what we're doing. I don't just want to be blind, and I don't just, don't just want to say, we'll go run into this wall as fast as you can because it's going to make you better. You know, I want to be able to tell them why we're doing something and why it's going to help them because, again, for me, the buy-in is greater. You can have the worst program in the world, but if you can sell it, it's the best program in the world, okay? If you have the best program in the world and you can't sell it, you can't tell the players why they can do it, they're never going to buy in. That's any level to me. Um, we want to teach the athlete high and wild, so the buy-in the buy is great. I already said that. Coach your coaches. Make sure the staff is all on the same page, so we'll have meetings. Uh, the day before and then at 6.30 in the morning, we'll, we'll come together as a staff, make sure setup's good, make sure that, you know, we all are on the same page. And then the, the B side of that is, because my coaches helped me a ton with our programs and setting stuff up for, you know, modifications for a guy with different injuries. Is a guy coming off of surgery? Can this guy not do that? We all have to know what guys can do, because maybe that day that guy can't squat, or maybe he gives you, this is a good one, he doesn't squat for four weeks, but then all of a sudden, I'll, I want to try squatting. No, we're not, we're not doing that today. That's, that's not the progression, you know. There'll be a progression back into that if we want to do that. 
Uh, but we all have to be on the same page. So if you know, Aaron or George is on the other side of the room, they don't have to run over to me. And now that guy's already doing something he shouldn't be doing. So we all want to be educated and know what the plan is. Same verbiage, same commands, and be consistent. Consistent also for me comes in your attitude. I can't be ranging up and down one day. I'm, I'm angry as shit, and the next day I'm real calm and I don't care what's going on. I have to be consistent every day with our players when they come in the room. They have to know what they're getting. Keep it simple. For me, training, you know, keep it simple. Stick to your basics. What is your plan? What are, what are your beliefs? What are your core beliefs? Stick to those. You see something fancy out there? I'm not going to put it in. I'm doing what I, what I do. I keep it simple. And, and with large groups, that's usually the best way to go because you can't coach everyone. You probably don't have enough people. pre left activities, what are you going to do? Space, time, equipment, stations. Do you have coaching help? So you want to, are you going to run one big group? Are you going to use whiteboards and write stuff down? What's your plan for that? Have a good setup. We use a lot of whiteboards, especially in season, uh, just to maybe write down. They, they know the shoulder stuff by then, or they know the ankles. Um, neck, we always watch. Um, and most of our movement patterns, we always watch. But maybe if it's a shoulder exercise, we'll put a board up just to help us out so we can get guys moving as quick as we can, because I don't want to have an hour lift because I don't have enough coaches to, to, to get them going. Most of our guys by that time have been in the program and they kind of know what's going on, not in camp, but once we get in season. And what's your coaching help? Are you one? You know, I started out uh, when I was at Nova, I was one coach with 90 guys. You figure it out. You know, how are you going to do it? We all did the same thing. That's what I had to do at that time. I've evolved. I have a coaching staff, uh, and I can do more with that. But, you know, what do you have? And you always have to think about that first. The room flow, OK? So as you're coaching these large groups, what's the room set up? You know, how do you do that? And I, it sometimes sounds easy, but it's not uh, from the standpoint of what do you want to get done? Well, I want to do this, this, and this, but I can't because they're going to have to go from here all the way outside. So I might change something and tweak it so the room flows and we can keep track of the guys uh, so I don't lose a drifter that's just standing over in the corner. We want to keep them together. It makes it a lot easier for the coaches and for the players if they know where they're going, they know what's going on. The room should be labeled. For us, we label the room. We always keep that a consistent. So we'll have wide receiver racks, and then on the racks, we'll have their name. So you might have certain guys that are on that rack. Some days with the rookies, we'll just, we'll just do it every day because we're still trying to figure out where they're at. But we're doing that by height and by weight. So if we have two six seven guys, I can't put them with the 5'10 five, the, the five, guy that squats the same. I have to move them around. There'll be some weight adjustment. But we always want to make sure we have people together and the room's labeled so when they come in, they know where they're going. Okay, I get my stuff there, and we get ready to go. Break the groups up if possible, depending on space and size. Spread out. But keep control of the groups. We always keep our guys together, especially in our warm-up stuff. It's always together. Once we get past our main lift, we'll break up. And then my coaches might have four stations, and each coach has a station. And then the way we program is going to kind of be, it's not always ideal. It's got to be, again, with the room flow. Um, I might do grip before I do a pull. It's because of the space. It might just be the way the day works out. And then we just alternate where guys go. Uh, again, in the offseason, there's a lot of guys in there at once. We have a good-sized room but I still can't get everybody doing a pull at once, so I might just alternate where guys are going. But we always keep them together. Safety first for us, trainers and hydration, we always have those around. The emergency procedure, what's your emergency procedure with a big group? Okay, unfortunately I've been through that where you have an emergency uh, and there's no trainer there. What are you doing? What's your plan? Um, you know, I was at Villanova the first time it happened and it opened your eyes and you really have to think, what am I doing? You know, punishment run in the morning, Something happens, what are you doing from there? So you gotta have a plan and you need to talk to your trainers about it and make sure everything is, is ready to go in those situations. So especially with a large group, cause then you got 90 guys trying to pull on the guy or help him up, who knows what happens. It could be something, he walks in the door, he has a seizure, a guy drops a weight on his foot, he's got broke, what are you doing from that situation now? Cause you can't just leave them and keep coaching the group. There has to be a procedure of what you're doing. Um, Assignments, you know, what drill, for us too, for the safety, staff assignments, what drill, how many reps, okay? If I tell these guys, hey, we're going to be at each station for about five minutes, okay? That doesn't mean just run continuously for five minutes. It's like you have five reps of this, this amount of rest time, because otherwise, <laughs> if I don't tell them, now we're just over and over and over, and you get into an injury situation. Be organized. If you're not organized, you're already basically set up to fail with the safety, especially. The pre-workout, this is kind of what we've been doing.